Hey folks, welcome back to Bee Music. I'm Marty, and today I want to show you a kind of a mix breakdown um, of a recording that I did a couple of weeks ago. Um, I also did a video with a single songwriter that I uploaded last week, um, and this is now the mix breakdown um, of the whole um, recording. And I want to show you what I did um, right on the console and also um, in the DAW with the plugins. So this is a mix breakdown in a hybrid setup. So um, I would say let's get right to it. Alright, so here you can see all the tracks. Um, it's a pretty straightforward song, um, typical singer-songwriter style. Um, we got a two tracks of a guitar, um, with one is the DI and one is the um, guitar recorded with a microphone. I believe it was a AKG C1000S and just the DI signal here on the second track. And we got um, two pianos. I just used the um, stock Logic Steinway kind of um, piano sound here. Um, it suited the song fairly well and we were pretty happy with that so we um, just use that. Um, then there is a, a layer underneath the whole song um, of an accordion and we also did that just with the MIDI keyboard and um, it's very quiet in the track but um, it, it really gives the the whole track a kind of a um, cool vibe and um, it's just a layer um, to make the song a little fuller. And um, Last but not least, the lead and the back vocal. And that's about the whole song. Here is the uh, mix down track where I also monitor from. Um, so when I go to the mixing stage, I always engage the two track on the console instead of the um, main mix. And the whole signal gets then routed through the main mix from the console back to the converters and here on this track and out um, to the two track of the console again. Um, so let's just start off here with the mix down track where I have a little bit of bus compression. Um, let's start the song maybe here. So it really doesn't do too much at all. Neil is barely moving. Then here we got um, the Pultec, um, so the Pultec Clone EQ, um, where I just boosted a little bit of 10k, and um, finally tape saturation um, kind of gives just a, a kind of a, a cool um, clue to the whole mix, and um, the Abbey Road default is a very good preset for that. So that's the mix down track. And now let's start here with the acoustic guitar. <clears throat> um, let's solo the first track here and also on the console. And firstly, I'm going to show you what I did to the plugins and then on the console. So let's start here off with the guitar with the AKG microphone. I've um, got an NLS channel here, the SSL setting. Um, the drive is normally, I set it to 6, um, which is a good starting point. Um, you get a coloration of the channel. Um, you really can overdo it, um, so you can really oversaturate it, but um, it went quite well here with um, this setting. And then compression. Again, it doesn't do too much. Um, the guitar was very well played by her. Um, there aren't any too much spikes or something like that in the transients. Um, so we wanted a really natural sound of recording. So it just touches the compression a little bit. Right? Then SSL channel. And as you can see, I reduced a little bit of 10K here. And I also reduced some of 200 Hertz. Um, pretty much because there was kind of a muddiness in there that I wanted to get rid of and also I reduced a little bit of 100 Hertz 
And let's listen to that with and without the EQ. So even though um, the bass is now missing, um, I also have the DI signal. Um, when we engage that, you can really hear the bass come back. So let's engage that. And with the DI, right? <clears throat> so you can immediately hear that the bass is coming back. And on the channel, I also reduced a little bit of um, 114 hertz here and of course a little bit of saturation always goes a long way um, and I think um, I reduced here a little bit of the saturation and I also reduced um, everything of the noise level so that's that and also on the DI signal I did pretty much the same thing so we got the NLS channel also a um, little bit of compression Then an SSL channel, and here I boost a little bit of um, 10k hertz um, just to make it a little bit more airy, and I reduced also a little bit of 100. Um, let's listen now together both signals. I'm gonna take it away. So the whole body of the guitar is gone, and now it comes back with the DI. So let's now switch to the um, console. I'm going to show you what I did here. So here is the EQ um, of the track, of the guitars, and I decreased here a little bit of 3600 hertz, and I boosted a little bit of 100 hertz. So even though I took away um, in the plugins a little bit of 100, and as I routed those two tracks to just the um, one track, the mono track here on the console, um, it kind of gives a different effect than just boosting it um, on the plugins itself. So, kind of liked that sound, so I went with that. And on the aux channel here, um, I inserted here the Elise's uh, MIDI verb. Um, I have here a warm room setting going on, and um, it just gives the whole impression that um, it was all tracked in just one room. Um, they're all on the channels, tiny amounts of it. Um, for example, here on the vocal, on the back vocals, and a um, little bit more on the piano, and for example, on the accordion. All right, here on the um, guitar bass, um, which is inserted on the subgroup, um, where all the guitars get together, it's just one guitar. I have the Elysis 3630. And um, the gate on this unit is cut off internally. Um, you can also read it on the internet, which is a DIY mod that you can do when you don't need the gate, um, where you can decrease the signal to noise ratio. So here um, on the compressor, as you can see, um, it really doesn't do that much. Just one to negative two dB of um, compression. And um, the ratio is two to one. Attack is fairly slow, 150 ms, um, fast release, a little bit of makeup gain. Um, RMS, um, uh, sorry, peak um, setting here, so it doesn't compress in the RMS mode, so in the peak mode, just um, grabs the peaks, the transients, and reduces it. And um, here in the soft knee setting, um, sounds a little bit smoother, and that's about it. So really doesn't do that much, just kind of um, compresses the whole um, guitar on a second pass than just with the plugins in the box. Okay, so the piano is just basically one track um, where it is also doubled here, this particular part um, with a, another take. So let's solo that and listen to it. So very smooth sounding, very articulated sound. Okay, and um, I pretty much took here just the Steinway um, preset 
and um, I really didn't do too much here. Might just reduce a little bit of 1K because there was a ringing. Um, I also reduced it on the console that I'm going to show you later. And so um, let's take here now the compressor, which is the stock logic compressor. So it really, again, here just touches the needle. Doesn't do really that much at all. Because it, it was also played very softly. So um, we wanted to have a very natural sound recording. We wanted to have um, nothing be over compressed. Um, so a typical single songwriter style recording that really suits the song. And um, on the other track, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, but I did a couple of moves on the console and um, let me show you what I did here. So, as you can see here, um, those are the stereo tracks and I boosted um, quite an amount, I think it's around um, 6 dB of 12 kilohertz. And I also reduced um, a little bit of 1700 um, where this kind of ringing was. So let's listen without. And again with. Just a little bit of more top end. Right, and to make um, everything seem that it was tracked in the same room, um, again, the Elise's um, warm room setting, um, a little bit more here than on the guitar, because it sounded quite nice on the piano, and so that was the piano track. Okay, next track here, accordion. Um, we used. Um, just the MIDI um, keyboard that we used in the other um, piano track here and we used the stock um, Logic accordion here um, when you see on the channel um, took everything out here of 100 Hz boosted a little bit of um, 600 um, with a very wide Q and um, took out a little bit of negative 3 dB and also a little bit of top end and um, on the console here I did nothing um, because I kind of like the sound and also it, it's very um, layered underneath the whole song so it just should give the um, song a, a, a kind of a, a cool atmosphere and um, we really didn't want to um, let it stick out too much. And um, here I used the Quick Tech, so the Quick Child from Waves, the 670. Um, let's listen to the accordion here. So as you can see here on the needle and also here that it just kind of um, compresses everything a little bit down to make it really smooth and even. Um, a little bit of tape delay. And finally a little bit of um, saturation with the J37. So let's listen to the um, accordion without and with plugins. Let's disengage that. With, without. So as you can immediately hear, it, um, it's really dark sounding, mellow sounding, and that's exactly what I wanted, just to sneak it underneath the song. That's basically all, just with one exception here, I also used a um, another reverb to um, kind of glue it a little bit more into the whole um, song and I used here a big blade um, from the R-verb 
really like that. So let's listen now just to the R verb here. And without. So this is just the wet signal. And I combined with the um, accordion. Okay. All right. So now finally, what really gets interesting is the vocal. Um, we have two tracks here. So one lead vocal and one background vocal. And let's start with the lead vocal here. Let's solo that without effects. All right. I used a couple of um, different plugins here. So let's start off here with the NLS channel. Um, again, with the same setting as the acoustic guitar, just to give it a little bit of a drive. Um, there were kind of some little parts that I wanted to get rid of with the channel EQ. Um, so around um, 12 kilohertz made a dip around 7, 500. There were some harsh S's and so forth that I reduced with a very narrow band here. And around 3,900 I also reduced um, 10 dB. I really cut them out, didn't like those frequencies. Um, so let's listen to that and without. Without. And you probably can't hear it um, when you don't use good monitors or really good headphones. Um, but um, when you don't take them out and you use them afterwards a compressor, they really stick out, so I reduced them beforehand. Um, I also used before the compression stage a deesser, um, reduced here some of 4k hertz. So just a little bit of it. Um, then finally comes the compressor, which is 1176, that I mostly always use um, on vocals. Um, it sounds really good. Here's a little bit of more compression going on. Just to really even out the vocals. Um, there are a lot of spikes, so all the vocals are very dynamically. And um, to um, make them more even, you really have to sometimes compress them fairly hard. So. That's that. Um, and afterwards, um, I really like to use um, another deesser because <clears throat> when you compress a certain signal and there is a harsh S or ESH sound, and the compressor really emphasizes um, the certain frequency, and you have to play around. You can really get rid of it beforehand or you can do it after the compression stage, so it really depends um, on the signal itself, and I used it here afterwards. Um, the frequency is here 7k Hz. This is on female vocals mainly, um, the, the S's and the um, higher pitched sounds that you want to get rid of. So let's listen to that. Die Stille, die and without. Okay, so um, just takes out those um, 7k S's. And then afterwards I used a EQ, so this is the first EQ, um, it's the Shep 73. Um, I used a little bit of preamp drive here. Um, I boosted a little bit of 12k Hz reduced a little bit of um, 3000 and I reduced a little bit of 220 hertz um, just to get a little bit of the muddiness out of the vocal and make it a little bit clearer and a high pass filter around 80. 
Um, let's listen to that. Ich will haben was gemeinsam. And without? Ich will haben was gemeinsam. All right. And um, I also send it to a um, reverb here, which is the Abbey Road plate. And I also made a um, demo of this plugin um, in a video, um, I think some time ago, um, where I have bass guitar and vocals and drums and so forth that run into this plugin. Um, it sounds great, but it is really CPU demanding. Um, as you can see here, it is all due to the fact of this plugin, and when you disengage it, it goes fairly down. Bam. And then when you engage it again, bam, it's up there. Um, so keep in mind, um, it's really CPU demanding, but it sounds great. And now let's listen just to the vocal plate itself. This sounds really great. And here with the plate selector, you can also try um, other plates. They all sound great. Um, they have longer tails, shorter tails. And it really is a great plugin, but as I said, really CPU demanding. So um, now let's check out what I did here on the lead vocals with um, the console. Don't so here's the track, let's start here, um, I didn't do anything to the top end, all I did was um, boost a little bit of 100 hertz, and here I also used um, another aux unit, which is here the Lexicon, um, I have it here with a combined um, effect, so the first one does a vocal hall and the second one is studio delay. Um, they are kind of in series and let's listen now just to the effect itself without the back vocals so this this is the lexicon and this is all the warm room of the um, Elysis, so all the instrument that goes to this kind of fake room. And again also the vocals go there. And here's just the lexicon. And that's pretty much it to the lead Okay, and last but not least, the background vocals, which we have here. Um, let's listen to just the background vocals and then together with the lead vocals. Okay. Um, I did a little bit of a trick here. Um, I used pretty much the same plugins as the lead vocals, so with the NLS. Um, also took here out um, fairly much of 12 um, kilohertz, with it was a slight ringing that I didn't like. Um, again, used also a de-esser and um, pretty much the same setting as the um, lead vocal here on the 1176. And on the Sharp CQ, um, pretty much the same as the um, lead vocal. Um, it really depends when you have background vocals um, to make them sit into the track to EQ them otherwise. But she um, sang a little higher here and um, her tone changed a little bit. So it didn't have to do um, too much EQ moves or different EQ moves than I did with the um, lead vocal. And um, again, also here, J37. And now, <clears throat> a trick that I often use on um, background vocals to make them kind of stereo sounding um, is a 
fake stereo um, preset here with the real ATD from Waves. Um, let's listen to that without and then with. And with. So, um, it, when you have it in solo, it kind of sounds a little bit weird, but when you take it now to the whole track, let's listen to without and then with. And with. And with. So, it has a lot of more space. Um, it kind of has the illusion that um, that the background vocals were sang two times um, but it's a very cool effect and I like it and it suited the song here really great so we used that and um, I also send it here to a chorus um, which also kind of, let's listen to that in solo Again, it sounds really weird um, when you have it in solo. And again, with. But when you take it with the normal background signal here. And without. So it makes it kind of a little bit thicker sounding, um, it gives again also a little bit more space just with the illusion of a chorus effect and um, I really dig that so I used it and again Abbey Road um, sent it to the vocal plate pretty much the same plate as the um, lead vocal and <clears throat> let me now show you what I did here on the um, console so here instead um, of the lead vocal I boosted here a little bit of air so around 12 um, kilohertz and I reduced um, a little bit of at the bottom around 100 and um, I also have it here sent to the lexicon and to the Elysis on aux 1 and aux 2 and what I did also to both vocals so the lead vocal and the um, background vocal is to send them to a subgroup which is 5 and 6 that's that and it's my parallel compression um, group and let's go to the um, parallel compressor here which is the Elysis 3632 so it's the new version than I have on the guitar bus so now let's just solo the um, vocals parallel compression here as you can see it was really slamming um, we have a pretty high um, ratio, 10 to 1, fast attack, slow release. And what you want to achieve with this parallel compression is that you get more articulation out of the vocals. So let's listen to the um, parallel compressed and the normal signal and then with and without how that compares to each other. So now let's listen just to the vocals and um, the background vocal the lead vocal and the background vocal with and without parallel compression so firstly um, without right now with and now let's switch between, so first the without and then with. And with. And um, at the end also to emphasize this um, kind of articulation of the vocals, I also used a good amount of um, volume automation here as you can see always on the end of her um, words I increased with just with the fader in the right mode here 
um, just the ending of her um, words. So let's listen to that. Let's get raised. Again. So very tiny in increments, like just 2 dB or 3 dB here and there. And it goes on to the whole song where I literally just sit and listen to um, the vocal takes and decrease or increase the um, volume. And we also did it, for example, here on the accordion, where we completely cut it out here, um, where we want to have a silence. Um, we did also a little bit here on the um, piano. We raised it here because she um, sang a little louder in the lead and the background vocals, so we increased the accordion here. And so overall, um, volume and automation is a really key element in mixing. Um, it makes a mix really sound great when you do proper automation. Um, you really can do it also on the console. I have a video up where I show how you do it with an analog console where you don't have VZA faders. Um, so you kind of just print um, the vocal pack into um, the DAW and use then the new track. Um, takes some time but it is a key element. Alright, so this was the mix breakdown of Katrin Hammerschmidt's new song Du und Ich. Um, I think it turned out really great and I hope that you could um, learn a little bit about what I did here in this song in my hybrid mixing setup. I hope you like it. Um, the song is available on iTunes um, and on Google Play, Amazon Music and I believe also on Spotify. Um, the link to the iTunes store is in the description below. Please subscribe to my channel if you liked it and see you in a next video.